Hi, I'm Norman Perolo. I'm a furniture maker at Perolo Design and a woodworking educator at uh, WoodSkills. And today I'd like to uh, provide some uh, my insight into the craft of woodworking and maintaining woodworking as a hobby. So in light of recent videos of mine of converting the hobby of woodworking into a, going professional and converting it to a business, there are some huge benefits also to maintaining it as a hobby. And I'd like to talk about that today. I'm Norm Perolo from WoodSkills and I like to talk about a few woodworking books I've uh, written. My recent book is Quiet Woodworking in an Unquiet World. It talks about my movement to uh, hand tools from high tech to low tech, a woodworker's journey which chronicles my journey from my former high tech career to my uh, current furniture making career. Along with that I offer courses through WoodSkills.com. The courses range from a basic woodworking course right through the furniture design and a comprehensive design and making course. All books are available in both print and digital format. Before I converted my, my hobby of woodworking into a business, I did maintain uh, woodworking as a hobby for uh, quite a number of years. Enjoyed that period considerably. One of the main reasons of, that I converted to a business was an opportunity arose. I, I had been creating certain products. In my case, uh, if you've looked at any of my previous videos, I have uh, videos on my box making journey as an example. So because I was uh, successful in creating uh, some high-end jewelry boxes, the opportunity arose for me to converted my hobby into a business and I talk about that at length in my earlier uh, videos along with that my furniture making journey into a business of uh, creating furniture uh, either commission based furniture or spec based furniture so that worked well too but let's let's step, take a step back and talk about woodworking as a hobby today woodworking is a uh, is an excellent pursuit of creativity it develops uh, your hand to eye coordination it develops your manual dexterity it develops uh, our brains it allows us to uh, perform calculations uh, work with some arithmetic give thought to uh, the process of creativity it causes us to make which is uh, if we go back centuries and centuries ago our forefathers were instrumental in, in making almost everything they owned so it maintains and brings back the tradition of, uh, of making which is very rewarding in itself. So most importantly, it keeps us off the computer. And uh, we all know that today, we, uh, most people spend considerable amounts of time on a computer. It allows us to, to move into a different environment to create woodworking crafts or woodworking objects. So this is a benefit in itself and in light of today's uh, computer environment. To start with, maintain a positive attitude about learning very very critical to be open to learn from others that have gone down the same path the woodworking path maintain the uh, the attitude and understand that you know very little if you're just beginning and the other person the next person knows considerably more they've experienced more at woodworking and in my case i'm a woodworking educator i've had 30 maybe 35 years now of uh, accumulated woodworking expertise and experience and knowledge to share with others. So you have to uh, essentially respect the fact that there are other people out there that are more knowledgeable about woodworking and, and the attitude is to accept their knowledge and allow them to share their knowledge with you. There will be uh, good and bad experiences in woodworking. The bad experiences are projects don't succeed, things don't go right, you've cut boards too short and uh, and so, so on and so forth, uh, things don't go right. Parts are incorrect parts, the aesthetic of a piece, of a furniture piece you created isn't quite right, so you spend a lot of time and effort into uh, creating something that isn't uh, satisfactory to you. But chalk this up to experience. It's, it's a good experience. It's a bad outcome, but it evolves into a good experience. When, when I began, I had considerable number of failures in my first, uh, in my case, small boxes. They were uh, very, very, uh, compared to what I made later on, very, uh, very crude and uh, kind of poorly made. 
but I was happy at the time and I didn't know any better. So I only found out through other woodworkers and through uh, participating in, uh, in craft shows through a guild I belonged to early on that my product was inferior to everybody else's uh, similar product. So that was, a, that was an experience and I uh, persevered and I moved on and I eventually developed a far superior product because I challenged myself with, uh, with learning. The two F's of uh, woodworking are frustration and failure. We'll all be faced with frustration when we start. I went through a considerable amount of frustration and learning techniques and feeling overwhelmed with the amount of knowledge I had to learn, all about joinery, wood selection, how to even finish a, an object or a piece of furniture or a box, where to even start, what type of wood to buy, what type of tools to purchase. I, when I began, this was almost pre-internet, there was very little information about uh, any guidance about woodworking. It was mostly through books and magazines at the time. Today you have access to a considerable amount of uh, information that could uh, help you uh, or guide you along much quicker so you can evolve into a successful woodworker much faster. A hobbyist woodworker I should say. So you will, you will be frustrated, you will experience failure and uh, my, my advice is to just keep going, persevere. Failure, determination and perseverance will make you grow as a uh, woodworker. Through my failures, my frustrations, I, I became more and more determined to learn the craft correctly and to persevere. And this uh, allowed me to grow as a woodworker uh, over a period of uh, decades. And uh, I look back at my early days of woodworking and uh, I hardly knew anything. And I, when I began, I began to take classes and study cabinet making at a local uh, college and eventually studied at a, at a dedicated furniture, furniture school, it's all about designing and making furniture. But before that, it was just essentially trial and error and uh, struggling with uh, with uh, woodworking concepts and what I could glean from books and magazine articles and the classes of course helped considerably the program and the projects within the program helped considerably in, in the learning experience. So you need to uh, learn to cope with uh, with the limited knowledge you have as a hobbyist woodworker to how to deal with that. My advice is to uh, either fast track your knowledge through some classes, either in-person classes or online classes, and I offer online classes of course. Read books on woodworking, that's still a very effective way to learn woodworking. And of course some magazine articles, but that's slowly disappearing. Uh, the online classes and uh, in-person classes and uh, of course YouTube videos are, are beneficial to, uh, to actually learning uh, woodworking in today's environment in comparison to uh, decades ago when we had no internet and uh, everything was done through books and either magazine articles or in-person classes uh, through a dedicated woodworking program. Also tap into uh, experts. When I, when I use the term experts, I, uh, I preface that ex word uh, experts with valid experts and there are countless number of uh, woodworkers on the internet today, specifically YouTube, that uh, have only learned woodworking very recently and they're out there teaching woodworking, they're not quite sure of what they're doing. And from what I've seen, they, uh, they're struggling it within themselves and they're anxious to actually just talk about what they share with their experiences to date. But I would, um, I would be cautious about uh, where you get your information from, especially on, on YouTube, and uh, try, to, try to find a person that, uh, that's been at it for quite a number of years that has acquired the experience and expertise and has actually taught woodworking. And these are the people that, that have the most knowledge to share, and they, uh, they actually know how to share the knowledge. <clears throat> if you're um, interested in a certain woodworking topic, try to view as many videos as possible. Try to determine which of the uh, presenters in the video is the most knowledgeable. Typically it will be somebody with a, an extensive background in woodworking, provide myself as an example, and not somebody that's only learned woodworking in the last year. There is Essentially it's better to learn woodworking correctly early on, and that's one of the reasons I stress uh, attending in-person or online classes because you learn the basics and it's important to understand the basics before in a process, in a, uh, in a sequence before continuing on with more advanced topics in woodworking. So learning uh, woodworking is a continuum. To use that old uh, expression, woodworking, learning woodworking is, uh, is a marathon 
not a sprint. So expect to spend uh, years and years developing techniques and, and learning and, under, and really understanding woodworking and not to rush into it too, too much. Now I understand the first projects you'll work on are, uh, will be very basic projects and that's as good because you need to reward yourself and gain that confidence early on about creating uh, woodworking projects. But eventually you'll, uh, you'll delve into more complex projects and try to uh, advance your skills and uh, so it's best to learn this, the, uh, the fundamentals early on in your uh, woodworking journey. The best method to learn uh, the woodworking fundamentals or basics is through a, uh, a guided uh, online program or in-person classes or through uh, a good books or uh, following uh, an expert on YouTube possibly. Back to the main topic of, uh, of uh, woodworking as a hobby. Be wise about tool purchases. Often less is more. Uh, we all get caught up when we start out that we, we assume we need a whole series of uh, different tools and a variety of tools and uh, of course the manufacturers of tools and the retail outlets will uh, convince us uh, that we need all the different tools to to actually perform woodworking, but this is not so. In my experience and other experienced uh, woodworkers will all tell you the same thing, that you don't need as many tools as you think you need. You can start off with a very few basic tools and uh, work up from there. You need to really understand the tools you need for the projects you uh, you work at or you uh, you intend to complete. As woodworkers, we don't all need the same tools. It depends on, on the path we've chosen within the realm of woodworking. So if you're creating small boxes, you can work with smaller tools or smaller equipment. In my case, I uh, actually, when I, when I began, I worked predominantly or mostly with, uh, with machines. That's the way I was trained early on in cabinet making with some hand tool work. But then I uh, eventually, over the decades, I've switched completely to hand tools. I still use machines. I perform sort of a so-called hybrid woodworking, which combines some machines with, uh, but I quickly move on to hand tools. And you can see all the hand tools behind me, and I have far more hand tools on other walls and other sections of my workshop here. So I, uh, I tend to focus on hand tools. And if you work with hand tools, you don't need as many hand tools as you see in behind me either. You can work with very few uh, hand tools. And I, I have another series of videos that talk about hand tool woodworking and the planes you should have. And you know, when you're beginning woodworking, if you decide to go the hand plane or hand tool path. <clears throat> so keep this in mind, purchase as few tools as necessary, only the minimum or the mandatory tools you'll need to complete some projects. And this will have you gain an understanding of uh, the next tools you need. So, and always uh, purchase the best tools you can afford if uh, this will be your main tool. Something I've learned and it's an old expression about purchasing the wrong tool and having to purchase it two or three times when if you purchase the correct tool, it's only a one-time purchase. It's painful at that time, but then uh, of course you forget about the purchase and you're, uh, you're very happy you purchased that more expensive tool. And this, this advice holds true more so with hand tools too, because uh, there's so many hand tools out there and you need, really need to separate the, uh, the marginal hand tools with the, the, uh, the better hand tools. And everything you see behind me is higher quality. And I've learned that along the way. I've sold off my marginal or my lower quality tools and kept the high quality ones, the ones I intend to use for decades. And a lot of them I have used for decades. So it's a testament to uh, how uh, wise a, a, a tool purchase can be if you invest early on in the tool and maintain that tool for decades. So purchase only the uh, the wood you need. That's another a trap that uh, novice woodworkers, when they're beginning, fall into. They seem to think they need all kinds of wood, but what happens is you'll, you'll purchase uh, wood and then you'll find out that you've, uh, projects really need a different type of wood. So you're, you're stuck with uh, an inventory of wood that you'll probably never use or you think you'll use, but you never use. And I've got caught up with this myself. I have a whole, inventory of uh, just an example of bird's eye maple that I fell in love with 25, 30 years ago and I've, I was using extensively in all, in all kinds of projects, figured woods, specifically bird's eye maple, and I've moved away from bird's eye maple since and I, 
I use uh, tiger maple and that sort of maple more recently in some furniture, but I've moved, totally moved away from bird's eye maple. So I need, I have a, a good inventory of bird's eye maple that I need to sell off at some point. And this is one of the, uh, the pitfalls of acquiring uh, wood inventory early on when purchased the minimum, purchased only the wood you need for that particular project and then work from there. Purchase the next set of wood woods for the next project. I always maintain a small inventory until you've, uh, you're established, you, you understand the type of woods you need, the hardwoods you need. So uh, we evolve as woodworkers and uh, our early work is not indicative of our, uh, our future work. So I began as a, uh, early on as a box maker and I don't make boxes any longer. I moved on to furniture and I talk about this in my journeys and, and I talk about this in several of my books, uh, specifically this one, From High Tech to Low Tech, how I my journey from uh, from box making to uh, to fine furniture. So we evolve, and that's I mentioned this as a good example of uh, how we evolve as woodworkers. So the work you do today as a novice woodworker, as a hobbyist woodworker, is not indicative at all of what you'll be doing maybe in five years. You'll probably progress through and create more complex work, uh, involve dovetails, more complex joinery larger components, uh, larger pieces of furniture. So keep that in mind. Start small, start with smaller projects, of course, and, uh, and work from there, essentially to challenge yourself. You will be challenging yourself over the years if you're uh, dedicated and, uh, and passionate about woodworking. You'll want to learn new techniques, new to forms of joinery. Uh, you'll be uh, tackling uh, larger projects as a hobbyist woodworker uh, or just simply focus on smaller projects. It depends on the woodworker. So in the realm of woodworking, we all follow different paths. You might be content creating uh, small boxes and charcuterie boards and uh, small decorative objects, or you might quickly uh, tire of that and want to move into creating furniture, which I, which I did essentially. So keep that in mind. Again, start with small basic projects just to learn techniques to learn some uh, some forms of joinery, how wood is put together, all about uh, dimensional stability in wood, which is a large factor in understanding how wood moves. And this is uh, probably one of the points that most novice woodworkers fail to understand early on about wood movement and how you don't want to really capture any wood and, uh, and join any wood together that will tear itself apart later on in the project. So a successful completion of small projects is a, uh, is a form of reward and validation. So go ahead and, and work on small projects just to reward yourself with the knowledge you've acquired to date and validate that knowledge through that project. And this is important because it, it maintains the enthusiasm and it brings enthusiasm into your woodworking. You'll, uh, you'll want to progress from there. So it's important to have completed small projects to be able to move on to larger projects. The worst thing you could do is start a large, large project and uh, have it fail and uh, lose interest in woodworking because of it. So it's better to just start with early on, start with uh, smaller projects, make a box. Box involves all forms of uh, miter joinery, for example, or dovetails or rabbit joinery and putting wood together is critical. It's the most critical part of woodworking. So you have to learn the, uh, the basics and the fundamentals of, uh, of how wood goes together, the joinery, selecting wood, dimensioning wood, um, the thickness of woods. <clears throat> Work yourself up to more complex projects, as I've mentioned. This could take a period of years, so don't rush it. Be comfortable with the smaller projects and increase, slowly increase the size of the small project into a scale it up to a larger project. And that seems to work, that formula. Now we'll, uh, we'll talk about how woodworking can become an obsession. Uh, we're all wired differently. Woodworking became an obsession for me early on and I was totally immersed into woodworking and I had to learn everything and, and I studied woodworking uh, for years and I, uh, I poured over books and magazines and when the internet came out I of course uh, tried to glean as much information from uh, from the early internet, whatever was available out there. It could, in your case, as a hobbyist woodworker, you could become slowly obsessed with, uh, with learning woodworking. And this, this is a good and a bad thing. A good thing is it fast tracks a lot of your knowledge and your dedication and your enthusiasm of uh, woodworking, but it also can cause burnout and cause you to not like the hobby any longer because uh, it's taken over your life. So, so the important thing is to pace yourself and, um, Maintain the enthusiasm, work at woodworking, 
but not have it interfere too much with, uh, with the rest of your life. So it can be overwhelming when starting out, all the knowledge you need to acquire, all the techniques, and, uh, and just watching videos of other woodworkers perform woodworking tasks is overwhelming because they seem to have, you'll find everybody seems to be more knowledgeable than you, especially when you're starting out. You begin to realize how, how little you know about woodworking when you're starting out as a hobbyist. But uh, persevere, maintain the determination, and slowly work yourself up through the projects, as I mentioned, and learn about joinery, and try to study and learn about the woodworking fundamentals. This is critical, because if you understand the woodworking fundamentals through some uh, online learning, or uh, in-person classes, or even books, or uh, watching experts on YouTube, you'll be much further ahead. Because uh, understanding the fundamentals apply to uh, small projects, larger projects, wood movement, is, uh, is a factor in, uh, in any, any scale of project, essentially. And that's and joinery too, for that, for that matter. Now, I've, uh, I spent considerable time early on trying to learn how to create dovetails, and it was frustrating at first until I sat down and sat at a workbench and, uh, and just dedicated days and days to uh, learning uh, how to successfully create dovetails, both uh, through dovetails and half-plane dovetails. And of course, I studied uh, some of this in school, and that helped considerably. It involves practice, is what I'm saying. You need to sit down and uh, sit at a workbench and practice all forms of joinery. It's very rare that you'll find somebody that successfully completes, uh, let's take, for example, a dovetail joint, successfully completes a dovetail joint uh, the first time. So it takes uh, a number of uh, retries to, uh, to be successful at uh, different types of joinery and uh, putting wood together and making sure everything's square and learning how to test for square and then uh, preparing wood and uh, understanding grain orientation and selecting wood for a project. So many factors. So again, it could be very well be overwhelming, but just pace yourself and understand that it's uh, it's a marathon, not a sprint, and you need to learn everything, as, and you will get there. So I would say within a year or two of, of uh, woodworking, continually work, creating projects, smaller projects of woodworking, you'll be much further ahead than when you began. And this will is a good indication of, of uh, your evolution as a woodworker and how just apply that formula and think of yourself two years down the road from there and how much more knowledge you'll be accumulating. And this goes on and on. If I look at myself, I've been at this, I started in the 1980s woodworking and I still have my very first project here in my workshop, but I've, uh, and not continually, but I really started in earnest in the 1990s, early 1990s at woodworking, and I've been woodworking ever since, both part-time and full-time, and I chronicle this in my books, and I talk about it in the earlier YouTube videos, but I, uh, I've become uh, a dedicated woodworker and furniture maker because uh, I'm passionate about it and uh, it's challenged me and I've learned considerably. I've met numerous people, numerous uh, like-minded uh, woodworkers in my journey that have, uh, and we've had good discussions about woodworking and I've joined local woodworking clubs and groups and that's something I would also recommend if you're starting out to join a, uh, a local uh, woodworking uh, club or a group and then attend meetings and try to talk to other woodworkers and maybe visit with other woodworkers, woodworkers that are further ahead in the craft than you are. They usually have presentations at these uh, guild meetings or club meetings and uh, you can learn from there too. So uh, there are so many um, methods or, uh, to learn woodworking today that there's really no excuse not to learn woodworking if you're passionate about it. It's something that you know, takes a little time if, unless you fast track your knowledge through through class, dedicated classes like I mentioned. So. So oh, get back to uh, woodworking as a hobby. Woodworking is a very immersive and solitary activity. Uh, you're, you'll find yourself getting immersed in acquiring all that knowledge I've just talked about. And it's considerable knowledge you need to understand to be able to even create your first project. And it could be immersive because you're overwhelmed with, with understanding and, and learning unless you uh, attended some classes and then you, everything is paced better because you've attended the class. And it's also a, uh, woodworking is a very solitary activity. You find that you're working with, by yourself in a workshop most of the time, unless it's a shared space. In my case, uh, it's definitely a solitary activity. I've 
been on my own as a uh, one-man uh, shop for a number of years. I had some help along the way in my business uh, when I was when I was a box maker, but I uh, slowly moved away from that, and I, I do commission work and spec pieces now. And uh, woodworking, uh, my role as a woodworking educator is uh, involves. Uh, basically working by myself. So uh, that, that explains a solitary activity. So there's nothing wrong with that. Um, you'll find that you can actually focus better on, uh, on the task at hand in, in, a, in an environment just by yourself. At least that works for me. So it's both immer immersive and uh, the solitary. To keep that in mind that this is, this is how woodworking is for the most part. And uh, most woodworkers understand this. They're comfortable with the fact that they work or need to work alone most of the time. So you don't really have any uh, anybody around to bounce ideas off or uh, to ask any questions. Okay. Unless you're working in a, uh, a woodworking shop or a business and have mentors around. But for the most part, you'll be uh, alone. In my case, it's helped me a lot to actually take a step back and understand concepts and uh, tasks and give thought to uh, the sequences and woodworking. I'm easily distracted with people around in my case, so it's helped me a lot in that sense by uh, the solitary activity. I'm alone and I can focus on everything and I work much better and much faster in that sort of environment. And I'm sure as a woodworker, as a hobbyist woodworker, you'll find the same possibly, or for the most part, or for t from talking to uh, countless uh, hundreds of woodworkers that work by themselves, they uh, seem to all indicate the same thing. So, so pace yourself to maintain the passion don't rush into more complex projects. Keep the project simple at first as a hobbyist woodworker. Understand all the concepts or try to understand concepts and fundamentals at the very beginning. Learn about joinery, wood selection, how to put wood together, how to keep the wood the project from destroying itself through wood movement, how to finish the project, which is uh, almost as important as creating the project. Apply finish, I should say. Uh, pace yourself in that regard. Try not to uh, do everything at once. It's, uh, it's a long road to understanding everything. You'll be much further ahead in a year or two of, uh, if you've been creating projects regularly. You'll look back at your first projects and you can't believe you, you actually did that because your second or third or fourth project are so much more improved. So you'll find the improvement, uh, your skills will improve rapidly at the beginning and the early projects will be will look fairly crude compared to anything you've worked, developed later. So maintain a, uh, it's important to maintain a balanced life to control the hobby. Well, what I mean by that is to maintain a good uh, life, work-life balance, hobby life balance. If you have a family and um, other people that depend on you, try to keep the number of hours in your woodworking hobby, control the number of hours and not get totally obsessed with it and overwhelmed and spend more and more time because it's very easy to get carried away when you're in a, a solitary environment of a workshop and time just flies. I, I can't believe how quickly time goes by when I'm working on a project, developing a project or preparing components for a project and you'll find the time just uh, vanishes and before you know it you've forgotten about everything else you had to do. So it's important to keep a check on the uh, number of hours you spend uh, in a workshop. Well, I've talked about gaining knowledge through uh, in-person and online classes. So fast track your knowledge through classes. I can't emphasize this uh, anymore, but it's important to, uh, to gain the fundamentals, learn the fundamentals, the basics of woodworking early on. And this will accelerate your fast track, your, uh, your uh, journey into woodworking so eventually move away from uh, woodworking plans. You'll find that at the very beginning, as with most woodworkers, we work from plans because we don't really understand how to design a, a project or it's much easier just to work with plans that somebody else has developed, uh, just purchase the wood and put it all together. This is excellent, an excellent form of learning because you still need to create the joinery and, and even understand how to uh, translate a plan, convert a plan into a a furniture piece or an object, a wood, a wood object. But eventually you'll find you'll, you'll begin to move away from, uh, from woodworking plans and you'll be, you will begin to develop your own designs and uh, for either furniture designs or objects you create in wood. 
the medium. And this is what I did. I hardly ever worked from plants actually. Maybe very, very early on I built a couple of workbenches from a magazine article in the early 1990s. I still have the workbenches, but I've slowly moved away and I, uh, I use some plants for guidance, but I modify the plants considerably, I find. But I eventually moved away from any of that and I design almost everything myself. I just have to look at a photo of something and I can reverse engineer that photo into a, an object from all the experience and expertise I've gained over the years. And you'll find this also as a, even as a beginning woodworker, as the years go on and months, you'll want to design your own projects. Another advice I could give is to continually practice and learn. Practice is so important in woodworking. There are hardly any woodworkers that learned everything right off. Even creating dovetails is an example. It takes weeks and months of uh, practicing to really be successful at creating dovetails to understand how to put a dovetail together without too many modifiers, too many adjustments or tuning, and to understand all forms of joinery, how joinery is put together, how woods are put together. So it's important to uh, practice and learn through uh, small woodworking projects, as I mentioned earlier. Also, uh, be conscious of, uh, always be conscious of uh, safety and woodworking, woodworking safety. Always be conscious, if you work with machines, always be conscious of, of how quickly you can hurt yourself with a machine, namely table saw, joiners, routers specifically. So try to understand how to run the wood through a machine, specifically a router, what direction you should be running the wood in, how to use a table saw to avoid uh, kickback and injury to your fingers. Really try to understand this. I can't talk about too much about this now because it's a whole subject in itself. And I do talk about this in my own online courses. I really stress the uh, safety component of woodworking. So it's very, very important because uh, you want to spend years at this uh, at, as a hobbyist woodworker. You want to spend uh, your, you'll be passionate and you want to spend a lot of time woodworking. So the worst thing, the you know, worst outcome you could have is to you know, become injured and uh, it puts a complete stop to everything. And then uh, of course you'll heal and you need to restart everything or you might get discouraged and never start again. So it's important to maintain a focus on uh, woodworking safety and I can't emphasize this more. Take a step back from every operation you do and try to understand if it's a safe operation. Even if you're working with hand tools, with chisels, never have a hand in front of a, a sharp edge. There's so many uh, rules and uh, guidance to using hand tools even. They could be dangerous. Not as, not as dangerous as, uh, as power tools or machines. And next is to never assume you know everything. I've been at this for 35, even 40 years, and I still, I'm still learning today. I've expanded my library of woodworking skills over the years. And uh, for example, veneering, I spent uh, months and months understanding how to really perform veneering well, how to uh, sculpt wood, dovetails, putting wood together, designing furniture. There are so many facets to woodworking. Never ever assume you know everything because you'll find that you absolutely don't know everything. All the more knowledgeable and more experienced woodworkers will give you the same advice. They, it's a, it's a, it's a never-ending uh, learning curve about just trying to understand everything about woodworking. And of course, the woodworking hobby itself, woodworking changes over the years, the evolution of woodworking. When I began, there was hardly any CNC for the hobbyist. And today it's, uh, it's almost common to find CNC in a small woodworking shop. Uh, I'll give you an example of Shape for Origin, smaller CNC machines. So a lot of woodworkers have embraced this and that's a whole learning curve in itself on trying to understand how to use these machines in addition to all the, uh, the standard machines and the hand tools. So hand, is, uh, hand tool woodworking is a subject in itself completely. You could spend uh, months and years trying to understand how to, all the facets of uh, hand tool woodworking, machine woodworking and, and CNC woodworking. So never assume you know everything. Finally, I hope you've uh, been able to share everything possible I could about motivating and uh, encouraging you to follow your uh, <clears throat> woodworking hobby. My final, uh, my final word on, on this is to enjoy your uh, woodworking journey. It's really changed my life considerably. I've never been happier that, uh, at woodworking. I had a former career and if you look back at my earlier books, I talk about a 30-year career in high tech and how I completely abandoned it and uh, moved to uh, furniture making and woodworking. So this is testament to uh, how successful uh, and how passionate I, uh, I am about woodworking and 
you'll probably find yourself as passionate and uh, it will motivate you to uh, possibly perform a career change yourself. So enjoy your woodworking journey. So please subscribe to my YouTube woodworking channel where I share more of my woodworking techniques, my, uh, my woodworking philosophy, my thoughts on woodworking and uh, all the challenges I've experienced and uh, I introduce some of the uh, new forms of woodworking I've discovered and also visit uh, woodskills.com where I have a good selection of uh, my books both in print and digital format on woodworking and uh, all my online courses and uh, I offer also offer some woodworking plans. I have maintained a, uh, a regular blog on uh, what I've got going on in my workshop and uh, in woodworking in general. So enjoy!